Hello and welcome. This video is brought to you by TheStreamingAdvisor.com. Tailor your entertainment with streaming. What we're looking at here is the Roku Express Plus. The Roku Express Plus you might have heard of because it's only available at Walmart. So you might be seeing it in Walmart catalogs and it's saying exclusive. And that's what it means. It's because this is only available at Walmart stores. You can probably find it online also through Walmart. But that's where you get it. You don't get it from Roku.com. But now that we've got that out of the way, I want to tell you about the product itself. This is basically, it's an entry-level Roku player. And you can tell that it's an entry-level Roku player a little bit in the navigation. It's not quite as fast and responsive going into different menus as more advanced Rokus are, but it's not that bad. In fact, once I did a firmware update, I found that the menus navigated decently fast. Like we'll go into settings and dart around a little bit, see what it does. Go into display type, and okay, and there we go. Back out, go to audio. See, the, the menus are moving decently enough, not too choppy. So I'll switch a theme. Where you start running into problems is what you're looking at right here. You see that it's loading a new theme, but it's kind of taken a little while to do so. It did it. It wasn't too long, but... It's a little longer than what you might see in a normal case. Putting Penny Dreadful up there is one of my, a friend of mine's favorite shows. Something that I noticed in our testing with this device this time is for some reason Netflix isn't loading. And I think this has some more to do with Netflix or maybe how Netflix's app works on this Roku. But we took a look and noticed that on the positive side, the Netflix app on the Roku Express Plus is the, the sort of current Netflix. This is different than the product it replaced, the Roku One, which sort of used an older version of Netflix versus this updated interface. But what I've noticed is today it's loading slowly. Take a look. It keeps getting seemingly hung up at 25 percent and i don't know if that's because of the say the quality of the signal i don't know you know i i did a test a speed test on my computer using fast let's say i believe fast.com that's netflix's speed tester it had 77 megabits per second in um da download so that should be just fine but yet here's what we get the 25 25 25 but oddly enough, on the other hand, so that we could get a, a pretty clear view on what this thing can do, I went ahead and took a look at it on Amazon and Hulu. I'll show you Amazon. We'll launch a movie. And you'll notice... It just gets started. Looks good. Good, you know, good playback. Same thing with Hulu. Gonna launch it. And we'll just do Spectre again. Netflix and Hulu actually have the same movie selections for the most part because so many of them come from epics. See, so and again, it loads. No problem. So, whatever is happening with Netflix might just be localized to Netflix at the point of testing. I just haven't had any luck with it. I don't know why. I even tested Netflix on my computer and on other devices to see if I had the same problem, and I didn't. So, can't tell you exactly what's happening there. 
On the other hand, Sling TV, of course, it's a live TV service. I want to take a look at how that would work because a lot of people, you know, want to use these things for cable cutting and various things like that. And so you want to know, can you use something like Sling TV? And let's see, we'll just launch this game here. This is a, this isn't a live sports this is um, a replay from 2013, it looks like, you know, for those who like to watch three-year-old football games. <laughs> See, loads, no problem. And let's try an actual live feed, let's see. What's something that's just on? Check out a news source. And yeah, we'll just jump into CNN. I want to congratulate you on your and so it loads. No problem. So yeah, so the thing with Netflix is a Netflix thing. I I, I don't know do not know what's going on with that. But in general this works pretty good. I mean, outside of that issue, I did notice some trum, some slowdown when I was starting it up. That's most likely because I have, you see, it says 132 channels. And so the only part that really lagged was the channels loading. It loads every single channel that you've got registered. If you're somebody that's just getting new, you know, just getting into streaming, you know, which is, you know, what this product is actually aimed at, it really shouldn't be a problem because it loaded the first 20, 25 channels pretty quickly, but I just had so many. It took, you know, eight or nine seconds for one, nine to ten seconds for another one. So, you know, with a hundred and something, that you know, it took a couple of minutes. But what you get with this is all of the functions that you would typically find with a Roku, including my feed, which allows you to see what is coming up as well as sort of track things. You can say you want to say like movies. Let's say there's movies out in the theater right now that aren't out yet. Let's see. All oh, these are actually movies that are actually out already. Oh, I, I must have gone into a. Uh, no, let's see. Let's see. Is Suicide Squad available for streaming? Yes, it is. Often you can find movies on this that are not actually out yet. There we go. Movies coming soon. Why didn't I think of that? Okay. So, Trolls is in the movie theater right now as of the making of this video. So, you can follow it. And when you follow it, what it does is it will let you know when the movie is going to come on on a Roku source. It's going to show you what, you know, if it's been added to Netflix. It's going to show you whether it's been added for, say, on-demand viewing with something like Fandango. And so that's a, a helpful feature. It's something that you see on all Rokus, of course, but just pointing out that this actually has that. Like other Rokus, it has a universal search or a near universal search. It's kind of a misnomer that it's universal because it's not like it includes all 3,000 channels. But you'll notice it's kind of cycling through over on the right side some of the things that it does work with. And there are many, many, many services included. I don't know what the actual number is right now, so I'm not going to misquote it. But they're there. And that's very nice. Something else that you know it does, though, is if you've never seen this before, let's say you're looking for a specific movie or maybe even a subject. You, you knock out Batman, right? And you look, here's all these different Batman titles, animated movies, the newer ones. And so let's say you wanted to see Batman Beyond the Return of the Joker. You go over to the right, and it's going to show you three different places to get it. And you'll see that in this case, everything is $2.99. But now and then you'll run into something 
that is a com is completely different. You'll see something with you know five dollar difference, or maybe something is free on one service and costs money on another one. So I can look at the, the shining. See how that one works. Oh, same prices on everything, but you can also buy it. See, that wasn't an option with the other. So you could choose to buy it and own it, or you can watch it for two ninety nine. Where you really, but you really don't want to go buying something that say you could watch for free on Netflix, or you know if you had it on HBO and you just didn't realize it. Oh, I don't want to go Shining again. Let's do like House of Cards. That should come up on it, Netflix and. Amazon here. Okay, here we go. House of Cards. So season one, let's say. Say 13 episodes on Netflix. 13 episodes on all these different places. But when you look at it, let's see. Come on up. No, it doesn't launch in the House of Cards. Okay. Yes. Well, that wasn't a great demonstration of what that app can do, huh? Now, this is showing you different places to find it, though. Oh, no, 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 I don't want to blow the whole, the whole app. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> Well, it's going to load Voodoo for us. Didn't think about that. But there it is. And you see, you can rent that for $1.99. They really should have done that on Amazon. I'm not quite sure why it didn't integrate that way. But that's something that I like about this, is that it's kind of like comparison shopping. You can see different places quickly and easily. And, you know, the only reason it took Voodoo as long as it did to load is because you know, I had never loaded it before. Any app, the very, very first time you load it, you know, when you have to sign in and things like that, it's going to lag. So be prepared for that. It's not that big a deal. Once things are set up, they're set up. But... In general, you see, this is a pretty good-looking system. Like, you know, once the Netflix issue is taken care of, I'm sure they'll do it as soon as possible. Let's see, film on TV. That's a live channel. We'll see how that one works. Of course, they've actually got an, uh, an official film on channel now, so wouldn't surprise me if they might have dropped service for the private channel, but maybe they haven't. Let's see. Yep, loads, no problem. So, you see, this loads, it loads just fine. Now, other information you're going to need to know about this device, it is only wireless. You can only connect with your Wi-Fi. It doesn't have an Ethernet port like others. The remote looks and feels like any other Roku remote, but you do have to have a line of sight with your device. That means that you have to be able to see it. You can't hide it in the back of the TV. You, know, you can't, you know, and you actually have to have the front of the box facing the remote. It's a very little box, though. It's, it's actually a little rectangle smaller than the remote. But in general, this is a pretty good device, especially for people just getting started. I, one of my very favorite things about it is that it comes with a free HDMI cord and it comes with free. AV cables or RCA cables, that's those red, white, and yellow cables. A lot of people, you know, use those for everything, like VCRs and DVD players back in the 90s, but if you still have a television that isn't an HD TV, you're not going to be able to use an HDMI cord to connect it. So it's actually a very nice thing that Roku sends that along. The Roku Express Plus is actually the only Roku model that comes with those AV cables as far as their new line. So that's very important to know.
it, that's all included in the price. The normal price is like forty dollars at Walmart, but who knows? When you see this video, they might have dropped it by five dollars, or it might be on sale. So don't tell you, don't don't try to tell me I'm lying to you or something like that. But that is what the actual price is. But that is the Roku Express Plus. Now I hope you found this information helpful. If you did. Please subscribe to the Streaming Advisor YouTube channel. Help us break 9,000 subscribers. That would be great. And as always, I'm Ryan Downey, the Streaming Advisor. Stream on, my friends.